37218, USA. The unsung heroes, if you will, of the radio biz. And we want to say thank you to you. If you're sitting in for someone like uh, Travis or whatever, um, we appreciate you as well. Thank you for listening. Classic Redneck Radio. Here we go. When life's feeling like it's going to be a wipeout, then grab your helmet and fasten your seatbelt. Don't forget your fire suit. your pickup truck and your party too. Bring out the farm tractor cause we're gonna be plowing true. Yeah, classic redneck radio, classic redneck radio, classic redneck radio, sweet classic redneck. Uh, you heard the introduction. Thank you for listening and tuning in. Greetings to you. I'm your brother, Billy Redneck, and uh, alongside me, uh, well, quite a distance away, actually, uh, is Redneck Nana Sam. Howdy. How are you, Sam? Howdy. All right. Sam's in a good mood. She's got the fire in her belly right now. So, I mean. Uh, yeah. I'll tell you what. Ladies and gentlemen, this time, this day and age, we're going to be reading some scripture from the book of Daniel and uh, Jeremiah, Yeremiahu as well this evening. I'm going to play a little song for you. I've played this many times on the air, but I want to play it in the beginning. Um, and then we'll play another one before the end of the broadcast as well. All of this by the will of Yahweh, of course. And uh, I have been, I have to tell you, uh, when you're suffering, when things aren't going right and people speak all manner of evil against you, fall asleep for righteousness sake and they don't understand you and all these things that occur and they make the wrong decisions and, you know, they don't see, they don't, they don't have the eyes and the ears to see. Um, I am being so remarkably blessed, baruked of Yahweh. I'm able to help so many people and it's not, a chore now it's it's almost um well we'll call it, we'll call it what it is it's supernatural it's miraculous um and you know i i'm able to and you should be able to do this as well you should be able to do all things and you got to remember in the set apart spirit of truth through christ uh he's the teacher of all things so it doesn't mean that if you're a plumber that you can never do electrical work or if you're a plumber it doesn't mean that you couldn't build a yacht if you're a plumber it doesn't mean you couldn't fly an airplane or if you're a plumber it doesn't mean you couldn't build an airplane you see uh, or dig a pond or you know build a house or whatever fix the appliances um, today I had to diagnose a propane stove oven and uh, diagnose that and um, it was impossible to get the part, and uh, actually, absolutely, we can manifest the part. We can manifest anything. Anything material can be manifest right in front of you. And uh, we, uh, helping that person, uh, we contacted every single supplier you could find for an hour and a half's journey, and no one, no one had a part. And uh, we manifest the part, and uh, it's it's just simply amazing. Um, the Almighty Spirit of Truth will lead you to all truth and all things. He knows what you need, Matthew chapter 6, before you ask. When you understand that whole principle in the kingdom, you don't, you don't wait around for something to happen. You move, and uh, it, it, it manifests itself. It, it makes itself right for you. The wind comes when your sails are up. You know, when your sails are down, you ain't going nowhere. So get the sails up, get your hand on the wheel, your hand on the tiller, on the helm. Uh, where did Christ sleep? right next to the rudder of the ship because he knew it takes words and it takes action to make things happen so you don't just sit around but uh so you know you have to be you know active uh so what i do today uh i fixed um uh you know diagnosed an oven i think it was a general electric yeah and uh, manifest the part 
and then there was a man, an, an older man, who had his 1982 Bayliner boat with a 70 horsepower Evan Rood uh, in the marina to be fixed all last summer, and they never fixed it. Um, this summer, it was there for two months again, and they didn't fix it, said they couldn't fix it, and they said there's only one one man who could fix this stuff. He's a man of God, and he's miraculous. He's the only one who could do this. He doesn't charge you know, the kind of money we would have to get you know, with our overhead. Certainly, they get $90 an hour to repair this stuff, but they don't Nobody has the knowledge. And um, so anyway, this old fellow calls up and says, hey, you know, the marina said you could fix this. And I said, well, do you have any idea how busy I am? You know, but you, if you want to know a little, a little proverb of wisdom, if you want to get something done, ask a busy man. If you want to get something done and you ask a lazy man, it ain't happening. And he who... You know, well, remember this. Remember, the early bird gets the worm, right? So, uh, so today, um, and it would have cost them like fifteen hundred dollars to fix this boat. The motor, the steering was froze up, totally froze up. You couldn't steer it at all. There's, no, it was just froze in position. Um, no spark. Carburetors were all gummed up. The choke uh, solenoid was all gummed up, and uh, the tr the the trim, the the hydraulic trim, up and down with the motor, that didn't work either. And uh, so, anyway, to cut to the chase, I miraculously did it all, everything, without any parts. And um, I think some fresh fuel was was needed. <laughs> And uh, this gentleman came, and uh, oh, we also I put on a uh, uh, what do you call it? The fifth wheel, you know, the dolly wheel that jacks the front of the trailer up for the for the for the boat, the boat trailer. Um, that had to be put on there and modified because it wasn't the right fit. So we made that beautiful. And anyway, did it all and called up the gentleman and said. Because he thought it was going to be here for a month or so, you know, kind of thing. And yeah. I said, uh, I called him up, and I, he's Italian, Catholic, right? And when he came, he said, I think God sent me to you. He goes, I swear. He says, and look, he points in his truck, he points to his rearview mirror, and he's got a, a Tumaz, you know, a Tumaz cross hanging from the rearview mirror. Quite a size one. It might have been like an eight-incher, you know? And so he had that, and he points to it, and he said, God sent me here, I know it, I can sense it from you. He goes, I can feel God all around you. And uh, and he says, uh, I don't care if it takes you a month, he goes, but I want to, you know, I'd like to get it in the water before it gets to be fall. He says, it's now, you know, last season, and now two months of this season, and, and these guys haven't done anything for me. So I said, uh, no worries, we'll we'll get it done for you. Excuse me. And I had to push push the cough button. So anyhow, um, I called him up and said, "Come and get it." He goes, "What? Are you kicking me out of? Are you kicking me out because you're so busy?" Uh, what? I, I said, "No, sir. Um, everything's fixed." <laughs> what? Did you fix this? Uh, yeah, we, that's done. How about this? How about that steering? He said, it's impossible. The marina said you, they couldn't fix it. It would be impossible. They'd have to buy a whole new steering system. I said, oh, no. I, I said, oh, no. I, I, I said, I, I fixed it. The Almighty's with me. And he just, he came right away. He went to the other marina because some parts were still left at their shop. And uh, so he went to fetch the parts, and he said to them, hey, you know, what do I owe you guys? And they said, we won't charge you a dime if, you know, Billy's a miraculous genius. Of course, they're carnal, so they don't know. A miraculous genius, and uh, he solves everybody's problems, all kinds of problems. <laughs> and he even makes parts that you can't buy anywhere. He'll okay, make the part. Okay. So this guy went out. Of, I mean, he's probably 70 two or so, 73, and he was he was doing the uh, the skipping, jumping Irish jig, man, even though he's Italian, you know, so, wow, it, w it was absolutely a wonder, it's a wonderful feeling 
to help people. And I help people all day long. That's just two of the things I've, I did many things today. Two, just two simple things. But uh, I got to tell you about the Ford Escape Hybrid Booster. An invention I made, uh, I don't know, a few months ago. No one in the world has this device. And we're saving and helping families all over uh, the country and in other nations where um, they have a Ford Escape Hybrid. It's electric with a gas motor. And it's a wonderful vehicle, by the way. And um, when, the, when you park the vehicle for an extended period of time, a couple, three weeks or so, the battery will drain to a lower level and then you can't start the car and you're stuck at the airport, wherever you are. You have to be towed to a Ford dealer where they charge you like a thousand bucks and you got to charge it up. It takes a week and, uh, and they'll try to sell you a $9,000 replacement hybrid battery for the back of the vehicle. Um, and it's called a, a rear traction battery because it gives you more traction because it's heavy, you know, almost like 250, 300 pounds. And so this battery has like 350 volts DC. This will kill you, you know. And everybody's afraid of the voltage, the direct current. And so nobody wants to touch it. You have to have on, you know, your spacesuit of rubber, you know. And uh, so... Uh, Yawa gave me a, uh, a Ford Escape hybrid that was towed to me in the middle of the night, literally. And uh, it was, in fact, disabled, and the battery was dead. And the vehicle will not ever start without that battery uh, at its 300-plus volts. So the, uh, the issue is that um, I began to research, and then Yawa said, uh, he told me a secret. And he said, the secret I told you in one of your other inventions, I have well over 4,000 inventions, and he said, take that secret and use it here. So I listened to Yahweh's voice, the still small voice of wisdom, knowledge, counsel, understanding, power, and more love of his law, his Torah, his word. And I went in and did these miraculous things, which no one else in the world knew about, that you could even do this. Ford didn't know about it. The inventors of the battery itself did not know. And so I established uh, a way to access the battery, and then I invented what we call the um, a battery booster charger, a machine. And we rent them to people so they can, when they're in a fix with their Ford Escape Hybrid, uh, they can follow my instructions, and I teach them over the phone how to do it. They get the equipment, and then their car starts right up. We have about a, we have very close to 100% um, restoration. Sometimes uh, some of the guys are buying um, auction vehicles, and we restore the battery, but the engine is bad, so they can't really. I can't say it's 100% will start your vehicle, but their batteries all get charged. That's for sure. And uh, so, what happened today? Also, in my extremely busy day is that, uh, and I invented several other things during the course of the day, making other inventions and products, uh, but on the booster project, it's quite a breakthrough. Um, because the Ford Escape battery is a $9,000 replacement for a car that was $35,000 originally and now worth about seven, eight, nine thousand, 9000 for you know, a $9,000 vehicle or $7,000 vehicle, or a $5,000 vehicle and you have to buy a $9,000 battery for it is kind of upside down, you know. So when you can provide someone a booster for $600 that could uh, boost their battery at any time, uh, that's helping America. And they don't have to throw their cars away. Unfortunately, before Yawa gave me this particular invention, people uh, were giving up their Ford Escape hybrids, and they're in a lot of uh, you know parking lots, uh, uh, government parking lots, and whatever, and they're in uh, salvage yards. And so, uh, just rotting away, so to speak, and people are you know picking them. Uh, picking parts off of them, but the problem is when you leave a the main problem with a Ford Escape hybrid battery is if you leave it unattended for several weeks, even months, it the battery voltage will drop and then it's good it's no good to anybody. So the salvage yards have all these batteries and uh, they're not up to snuff. So when they sell them for you know fifteen hundred bucks, a thousand bucks, whatever, uh, the battery comes to you. You put it in your Ford Escape. 
the vehicle doesn't start. So what I created today and 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 it's successful before the broadcast i went and, and examined the the lab tests that i'm doing and uh, i made a way for our yahweh gave us this witty invention i made a way for the um the redneck ingenuity hybrid booster charger to charge two batteries at the same time on the salvage yard shelf and we have a timer on the system so that um, if they're if they picked from uh, some salvaged escapes and they put two batteries on the shelf, uh, the timer will turn on and charge the batteries 24 hours a day for a certain period of time and shut down again. And then the next day, the same thing, so that when they get ready to sell that battery, they're going to sell the battery fully charged, and we make a mini booster that they can sell with the battery, and someone will never have a problem with their battery because our uh, modifications are done to the battery by the salvage yard. They ship it out, and they have a mini booster, and they can uh, put it in the cigarette lighter and never be uh, uh, in a situation where you can't sort of jump start your car, so to speak, with that 300-plus volts. So that's um, uh, one of my days, and that's I'm mentioning just a very small portion of the day. And I want to say thank you to the Almighty Creator of Heaven and Earth. We're starting the seventh day Sabbath right now. This is a live broadcast. If you look at the moon, you see one side of the moon is flat. That's a transition line or timing mark. There are four phases that lock step with the sun and the stars. And, uh, and if you don't understand how it works, you're going to say, Oh, that's from Babylon. That's the Jews brought that from Babylon. Here's the historical proof. Uh, excuse me, you don't know your ass from your elbow. And if you go study the uh, Assemblies of God, they found out the secret of the sun, the moon, and the stars for a little space of time. Just like the Seventh-day Adventists knew about keeping all the seven appointed times of Yahweh, and they stopped doing that. We found that, one of the brethren found that in a Seventh-day Assembly library, where they used to keep the Torah. Oh yeah, you guys are, you guys are far from righteous. And uh, so... It is the seventh day, um, Sabbath evening, and it's coming all the way across America at 9 o'clock East Coast time when we start the broadcast. And I'm mentioning that time because it's 6 o'clock uh, on the West Coast, of course. <clears throat> Excuse me. So when you see that moon out there with that flat side of the moon and the full moon, uh, that's a seventh day Sabbath, absolutely. And it ties in with the sunshine and when, it's, when it sets at the beginning of the month. Um, man, <clears throat> every night the stars utter her speech and uh, the zodiac is actually, they were, it was actually the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. It's not, you know, uh, Leo the lion, that's, that's the lion of Yehudah. You see, which would be Ephraim. This is all secret, secret stuff. And of course, nobody's going to tell you because if they tell you, that makes them a liar or they've been carrying false information. So they don't want to appear as a false prophet, pastor, preacher, evangelist, teacher. Uh, so they're not going to ever, 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 ever admit to being wrong, especially this, as we will say, dead wrong, dead wrong. For the Sabbaths were made for your dwellings for your dwellings and uh, who's going to kill you <laughs> you better read the lyrics in Deuteronomy chapter 32 that's part of the song of Moshe and it starts off I Yahweh bring life I Yahweh kill I Yahweh wound I Yahweh heal Christ told you to shout that message from the rooftops and he said, do not fear man after he kills you. There's no more he can do. He's talking about a paralyzing fear. And that paralyzing fear is what you use so you don't sin anymore. You're supposed to remove the fear of man and the fear of death, fear of sickness. You remove that paralyzing phobia, phobia fear. And it's phobia, to be sore afraid, to tremble, to tremble, to shake. You take that and you put it in the place... Uh, of the commandments and you'll keep them all right because that's why Christ said I'll tell you whom you shall fear friend he says friend I'll tell you whom you should fear for him I say who can kill your body and cast your soul into into hell 
So there you go. God will kill you. And he's going to kill you. I tell you, he would that none of you would perish. But your smart asses, arrogant, know-it-alls, lukewarm, Laodicean, you're going nowhere unless you repent. All men are required to repent. He winked at all of our ignorance, but now requires all men to repent. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, remember the four aspects of the set-apart spirit of truth is teacher of all things, helper and comforter. That's how you learn the Torah. And he writes the whole Torah on the tables of your hearts and minds. Now, check out this song from this little girl and her daddy. When the road looks rough ahead And you're miles and miles from a nice warm bed You just remember what your old pal said Yeah, you got a friend in me Girl, you got a friend in me He says those who preach the fear become his friend Let's do the first Little girl's doing the second you verse. Oh, how sweet. You got a friend in me. You got troubles. I got them too. There isn't anything I wouldn't do for you. We stick together. Can say it now. Cause you got a friend in me. Yeah, you got smarter than I am, bigger and stronger too, but none of them will ever love you the way I do, it's just me and you girl, and as the years go by, our friendship will never die, you're gonna see it's our destiny. Matthew 10, he said to shout it from the rooftops, the fear of Yahweh. Let the malefactor on the right side preach, got him into the kingdom, paradise. Where are you going to hell? Better think about it, because it's true. Classic RedneckRadio.com, preaching the truth to all the nations of the earth before the end hits America right in the testicles, because you're girly men. You need to have your balls cut off. Yeah, I'm not talking perverse here. I'm talking in a metaphoric way so you understand. If you don't preach what Christ said to preach in Matthew chapter 10, you are worthless to the kingdom. And you're hanging on a tree like a malefactor on the goat side. Yes, that's if you call your children kids goats. And you're saying, hey, save yourself, Christ, and save us. Uh-uh. Sorry. He said, Do you not fear him? And he said, Before I call you servant, Christ said, Now I call you friend. Shout from the rooftops. The next thing you hear in the ear. Shout it. Shout it. Revelation 14.6, a messenger. Flying in the midst of Shemaim, that's shortwave radio hitting the ionosphere, going up as a beam of light from Nashville and coming down as a curtain of rain, the latter day rain, man. The former rain, the preaching of the fear and the commandments and the Torah and the calendar. Restoration of all things is at hand. That's right. And he says in Revelation fourteen six Flying amidst the Shemaim, having the everlasting good, glad news. The everlasting good news. Here it is. You ready to hear it? Because you're not preaching the good news. The everlasting good news. Fear Yahweh and offer Him, worship Him, esteem Him. Worship means obey Him. For his hour of judgment has come. He who made the heavens, the earth, the seas, and the fountain of waters, and all the creeping things therein, he made. He is coming. Prepare yourself. Prepare to meet your Yahweh. Your breath is a gift from him. And he will take it from you this night, saith Yahweh Shua. 
The spirit of the breath in man and all creatures, all creatures, is a gift. It's the Yah breath in and the Wah breath out. You must only speak that which you hear from your Abba, from your Daddy. Wah means her, she, your wisdom. Let your words be few. By your words you'll be condemned. By your words you'll be justified. You'll be judged by every idle word you speak in the days of the week are idols. There are other gods that you are loving. You're calling the venerable day the day of Yahweh. This is the day of Yahweh. Rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, it's Thursday, the god of Thor. It's the god named Thor. It's, it's Thursday. That's the god. We're worshiping the god Thor. Oh no, tomorrow's fish day, Friday, frigga day. We're going to worship the fish god whose name is Fry, man. How about... The day of Yahweh, right? This is the day's made. I rejoice. Wednesday, it's Wednesday. You declare it, you Christians. You Christians, you Jews, you Messianics. Your worship, you're breaking the first commandment. You are putting other mighty words before his face. You are an abomination to the Almighty. And the preachers are dumb dogs that cannot bark these truths. They run from the truth. Resist the devil. The, the spirit of Antichrist is the, the spirit that's against the preaching of the fear of Yahweh, which is the treasure of the Almighty. Isaiah 33, 6 says, The fear of the Lord is His treasure. And where your treasure is, there also is your heart. Out of the mouth speaks the abundance of the heart. Now you know what's in Billy Redneck's heart. And you get it now, don't you? Because you can't gainsay this. There's no way out. There's no way out except for sackcloth and repentance. And the word repentance, when you study the root meaning of this word repentant, it means to fear your maker. Christ said to shout it from the rooftops. In uh, Hebrews chapter 5, Christ was acquainted with sorrow and grief and was known to fear his Father. That's the mystery of Christ revealed this night to you for the first time. How did he not sin? It's the salt covenant of the fear because he said our daddy will kill us if we break that Torah law. He gives you power to pull it off. He took away the death penalty on that tree he was nailed to. By his blood, by his stripes. The word stripes, by the way, means friendship in Isaiah. And Matthew 10 says, Before I call you servant, now I call you friend. Shout it from the rooftops. Fear Yahweh! He will kill you, America! And he tells you before he does it, I would that none of you would perish, but would all come to repentance. Now I'm going to kill you. And you say, Oh, that's the Old Testament God. He was a he was an evil mean God. But the New Testament God, Jesus Christ, he's just he's just panty waist love. Everybody's gonna sit down and sing Kumbaya around the fire. He's gonna have little children on his on his lap, and you you're gonna have the lion laying down with the lamb, all that. You're gonna you're gonna believe all that. That stuff ain't gonna happen till you get America gets gets stripped and leveled to the field so bad that the corpses will be rotting and there'll be no food. Hey, wait a minute. I'm hearing in the spirit of truth. Let me play this harp music here while we're talking. Did you know, Sam, redneck Nana Sam, that they announced today that big food problems coming you wouldn't be able to afford the food can't get the food in the future up close future you're going to be coming the scientists are now announcing you're coming into a famine in your, in your very near future now who told you that who told you about redneck wilderness freeze dried food is going to be your bartering money and it's going to be the food you eat who told you that? Five entrees, two serving pouches. Going to be your money. It's good as gold. Certified seal. Showing you the value of that two serving pouch in silver and gold grains. A measure of wheat for a pence in the book of Revelation means a cup of flour for a full day's wages. That's a hundred bucks for two servings of pasta primavera. 25 year shelf life, freeze dried food. 
a little fire and uh, two cups of water, and you got a meal. And let me tell you, they'll do anything for you for that food. You're going to be able to barter for a small, short season. You'll see. Remember Revelation 15? Here are these who overcame the beast as Mark and his image. Standing on the sea of glass, they have a clear view of all the bullshipping. Yeah, that's what we get to see now. The lies are so thick. It is so thick out there in liars. I'm not saying there aren't a few good Americans who try to do their level best to be compassionate, kind. That ain't making you in the kingdom, guys. You're not in the kingdom until you have the key of David. You enter the house through the door in the porter. Christ is the door. You got to get in his heart and you have to have a heart to fear him as David had a heart to fear his maker. David was a man after Yahweh's own heart and Yahweh said on the top of Mount Sinai after he gave the marriage covenant to all the house of Israel, the 12 tribes who are from four different mothers, one father, Yaakov Israel, four hair colors, four eye colors, and here's Christ up there, here's Yahweh up there, he's sounding his ram's horn, he's giving the Torah law, and just in a short while, you're having the golden calf, you're running around naked, that's what you are now, naked, blind leading the blind. And he says to Moshe, this is the creator of heaven and earth. He says, Moshe, Moshe, if only they would have a heart to fear me. And the fear of the Lord is the treasure of Christ. Don't you get this, people? They have not preached the true gospel ever for, for generation after generation. The Bible says they teach the fear of the Lord by the precepts of men, and they, men have shut up the key of knowledge, neither did they enter in themselves. You see, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. That word beginning indi indicates a key to something. That's the first candle that lights the other six aspects, the seven aspects of the Spirit. The first one is the foundation, which is the fear of Yahweh. And then your children justify to wisdom, because the fear of the Lord is wisdom. Job 28, 28. When you come in his door, as children justified with wisdom, you got the key, you open it up. That's the heart of Yahweh. He wants you to fear him, baby. You Babylonians, the word Babylon is where you get the word baby from. So stop calling children baby. Is she going to have the baby yet? Are you going to have another Babylonian confusing child, a kid, a goat? Is that what you're going to have? You're going to have a Babylonian baby, another kid, a male goat? Is that what you're going to have? Uh-uh. Another word that's bad is pride. Proud. Proud. Oh yes, Johnny, I'm really proud of you winning the baseball game. Hitting that final home run. Brought us all the way home. We've got the, uh, the, we've got the, uh, the trophy. Johnny, Johnny, I'm really proud of you. Uh, I could see uh, the Bibles, you know, uh, the word changing, you know. Uh, Christ is coming down to be immersed, witnessed by Yochanan the Immerser, and, and I could see the creator of heaven and earth talking about his son Yasha, that's the contracted form of Yahweh That's what Miriam, his mother, and stepfather Yosef called the only begotten son, Yasha. It means Yahweh saves. <laughs> you, you people don't know. And I can see him coming down and, you know, and a voice from heaven saying, Yo, this is my son and who I am really proud of. You know what I mean? I'm really proud of him. This is my only, this is my son. I'm really proud of him. Uh-uh. He said, I'm well pleased. And Yahweh did all this, the good, the bad, and the ugly, for his pleasure. All of this existence is for the pleasure of the Creator. He's having a little fun. And you can't perceive how sovereign he is. He's having a little fun. So he wants his wife to be obedient. And, if, and I'm, I'm making this up so you understand the dynamics here. If he wants his feet rubbed, I jump. I ain't worried about how I'm going to rub his feet because he provides the fruit. I'm the tree. I don't want to wither and die. So when he says jump, whether I'm in season or out of season, I'm instant, baby. You Babylonians, I'm instant. I'll rub your feet. That's not in the Torah, but I'll do it. I'm willing to do that. It's not in the Torah to take your only begotten son, Itzhak, and go to Mount Moriah, which means the fear of Yahweh mound or mount, and 
take your only begotten son and build an altar with him, have him carry the wood up the hill, leave the servants down in the valley, and then take your 30-year-old son and, and, and bind him to the four corners of the altar, and then take out a dagger and kill him. That's not in the Torah to do that. But Abraham was obedient instantly. He didn't say, well, I'll have to check with my secretary. Uh, we'll have to get the plane warmed up. It's a $60 million plane. You know, it cost about a hundred grand just to go across the world. Uh, I have to call my pilots, my navigator. Um, I'm a big preacher, you know. And, um, oh my goodness, I just found out that the plane is in for um, a... They're cleaning the bedroom in the religious plane. So I, I'm, I'm not going to be able to make it, God, right now. I just can't do it. I'm not going to be instant. You know, but you gave me a big-ass $60 million plane. I can't be instant, God. You see? That's the problem. When he went to that fig tree, that's what a man... That, that's not Israel. That's a man. Any man. Any woman. That's why I told you to be instant in season or out of season. Because when you hear the still small voice because you fear him, you have to fear him to hear him, then you learn, then you obey. So, that's why you can't hear a still small voice. I hear, I hear people tell me, I'm working hard, I'm repenting, I, I, I want to hear his voice. You already hear his voice. You just aren't acknowledging it. You don't even know what his voice is. Now, he can speak to you like a man. It'll scare you. You'll be crying. But his still, small voice is almost like an electrical signal inside of you. It's equivalent to you having to have five different kinds of men preach to your ears, plurally, because you can't hear in your heart. So, it's like a radio receiver tonight. you got to hear my voice through the speakers. There's two witnesses. Stereo. And if you could hear his voice, you wouldn't need the radio transmitter and receiver. We can do all this in the supernatural realm. His voice is like being inside of the radio receiver as a component of the circuitry and when the signal goes through the circuitry of the receiver because I'm a receiving is I receive his word when it goes through the system see he tells us things to come so I'm hearing his voice before you do and so we get the information before the world hears it because I hear it before, that's why we're the elect, we're part of the electrical circuit. Oh yeah, man. And the body, human body is an electrical, uh, wi you know, hardwired electrical system. You know, it's a, a chemical, electrical, uh, each cell with the salt in the cells produces electricity. It's, a, it's an electrical pump. Yeah, that's why when you when you get sick, they give you you know the saline uh, uh, IV, and you say you start to have energy because salt is an electrolyte. Uh, they're they're actually salt is a radio crystal too, like a crystal radio. Uh, when you're the salt, when you lost the fear, you lost the salt. When you drink the salt water, uh, and you fear Yahweh, you get to be woo, you get to be powerful, man. I mean powerful. You don't need the jet, you don't need the microphone, you don't need the radio. I could be on one station and talk to the whole earth. How's it done? When you're a messenger of Yahweh and you're a Sheliach sent one, you speak the word as binding and loosing heaven and earth, and the power of the Ruach HaKadosh is poured out on all flesh. So when we make the announcement like a lawyer would make a notice, it goes to all of the hearts of man, all their DNA, because Yahweh is already in them. He's their breath and he's their spirit. Uh, you can find that out in Job chapter 34, verse 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So, I can be speaking right now, and 7 billion people will hear the information. Now, if they resist it, and they'll hear it in their tongue, if they resist it, uh-oh, uh-oh. 
not good for them when you see that notice in the newspaper, that legal notice, and you don't know about it, you know, and you don't do anything about it, and you don't tell your buddies, one of your friends could get caught in a, a snare and say, I didn't know you were supposed to move over when you're in your chair to fire and there's a cop stopping somebody and fleecing them for money for a Catholic indulgence ticket they didn't have a seatbelt on. I didn't know that when you see that cop there stopping one of your fellow neighbors of America that you had to pull far over and go real slow. There's a new pullover law right now, and if you don't do that, you'll get your ass whooped in court. If you didn't know about it, you're going to find out about it the hard way. And that's what's going to happen to Christianity, to heathens, to Americans, to the world, to the, to the, to the Jews, to the Messianics, to the heathens, to the, to the Wiccans, to the, to the devil himself. It's going to be like thief in the night, shocker! Yahweh will mock you when your fear cometh as a whirlwind. We got a few minutes left in this broadcast. Let's get some some scuttlebutt in here, some spittle, some skittle, whatever you want to call it, from our sister, Redneck Nana Sam. What can you share with us about this Jeffrey Epstein mess that's now opening up, opening up, and the list of these corrupt people is so huge, and so Israeli Mossad, so secret snake under the rock, seat of Satan is Israel in the Middle East. Bible says so. And the global sodomite capitalist Tel Aviv. And uh, they have their little claws in everything. And what do they do? They get Epstein to get everybody to go and commit the perversion. And then they film it. And now everybody's controlled. And it's really quite simple. Redneck Nana Sam, tell us about some of these worldly events taking place. <laughs> Thank you so much for the Billy. And boy, did I enjoy your talking about that uh, Ford booster and what happened today. Uh, it's just so fantastic what uh, Yahweh does through you and, and the people you help and that boat. I mean, it was just it was just fantastic. Thank you so much. For sharing that, I know that the people love that as well. Um, before the the quick note on uh, Epstein, um, there's some really serious things going on <clears throat> with Google, Facebook, and Apple, and the whole control of the internet and their masters. And uh, President Trump is close to signing some sort of executive order. Um, some people are actually uh, like Mr. Thiel, who is a billionaire investor. A couple of weeks ago, he said uh, that Google should be uh, charged with treason, actually. And so we'll see what, what's going on because, I mean, it's very clear that that control over what we thought was free, but now it's all we realize it was just a system to get everybody to say what they think so they can know what everybody thinks. For example, um, Mitch McConnell, who's the Senate Majority Leader, he had some people outside his house, and they were threatening to kill him, and they had some video of that, and Mr. McConnell uh, put that video on his Twitter account, and Twitter immediately suspended Mr. McConnell, the senator. The, the, and, and, but Black Lives Matter, who was there, um, can do whatever they want to do on the Internet. So that's just one little example of um, what's happening this now Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez who we don't really talk about mentioned well uh, white supremacy is a virus that is uh, inside everyone and it's obviously so clear that the demonic things that are Satan wants a race war and we have to do all we can not to engage in this crazy behavior and of course they're talking about gun control after these uh, terrible things that are going on and Trump in the past has promoted red flag laws 17 states actually do have red flag laws and, and what that means is if someone anyone says something about you and they think you're mentally unstable they will come and they will take your guns so that remains to be seen of course John Brennan who was the one who really probably created the whole Russia thing um, he was the CIA director under Obama, and he says, well, you know, we just got ban capacity, high semi-automatics and high capacity magazines, and we got to end that hate speech that, uh, you know, 
form of violence. You know, actually, Amnesty International has said now the United uh, America, you know, we'll say the corporate United States, that it, it, you should be cautious. You shouldn't visit there because of growing gun violence and hate available to everyone. And of course, that's how they want to do it. But uh, we know Yahweh is not going to let them do everything they want to do. And as far as Mr. Epstein, uh, Billy, you mentioned that. DynCor, uh, back in, in the Iraq days, was known for trafficking children and women. And it turns out that uh, Mr. Epstein um, uh, has, uh, uh, has one of their uh, um, helicopters. Um, he has Zorro Ranch, which uh, is in New Mexico, and uh, Epstein flew a helicopter sharing a covert U.S. military plane tail number used by Dine Corp. And this was also during Bosnian War under Clinton. Child trafficking happens so much in wars. And, um, I mean, there's just so much thing. There's a shelf. There, there's political people surrounding this ranch he has in Zorro. Mm -hmm. Um it's just he has a daughter in the U.S. military, rumored to be intelligence. Um, I mean, there's just he well, has you, his you, own watch this. I mean, it's just it's, so, it's going to be exposed. Sam, listen, really. listen to me, listen to me. Comey's daughter is one of the prosecutors against Epstein. Comey, the FBI guy who was mm -hmm. fired by mm -hmm. Trump, his daughter is one of the prosecutors against uh, against uh, F, uh, Epstein. Yes. And, and and they got him in a New York prison, and Andrew Cuomo's part of that whole scam. He was on the Lolita Express or whatever. He's on the he's in the, his name is in there. The Epstein boat. There are all these corrupt things going on. These perversions going on, and so they're trying to they're trying to control the damage. Yes. Oh, and yes. they're sending in their little shrills, their little their little uh, it, operatives to go in and, and control the damage. So they're not going to be able to do it because the Bible says nothing can be hidden or covered once the man, once the messenger of Revelation 14.6, which I did for seven years, it's done, preaches the fear of Yahweh, flying to Mr. Shemayim. You cannot, nothing can be covered up. It's over with. Yes. You guys got to yes. repent. I'd be running for New Zealand if I were you, or maybe some one of the islands. Of you know, maybe all move on the island. Yeah, we can, we can surround the island. Yeah, you can all go live on the island and eat bananas. Well, let's talk about. Uh, I've got ten minutes left of the broadcast. I want to read some scripture. Um, because I I'm a messenger of Yahweh. I have many, 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 many assignments. Thousands and thousands and thousands. This is one I want to bring it out so you understand how this works. Um, Fred Smith of FedEx lives in his offices in Memphis, and uh, his daddy left him some money and he started FedEx, right? And now it's a big outfit. But he just cut ties with Bezios there, uh, Mr. Pezios there, uh, Amazon guy. Cut ties. FedEx is no longer going to do the, the the cheap shipments for Amazon. So you can see things happening now. You got to go back about da, 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 let's see twenty forty. We'll say thirty six years or so ago. And one of my assignments was Fred Smith of FedEx, and I was sent in by Yawa to change the FedEx company. And here's what was happening. Fred's envelopes of FedEx had a little cellophane um, bag on the side of the envelope. You put your stuff in the envelope, and then there was what's called an air bill, an NCR copy thing. You know, you make make like three copies, and so you write out the 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 to and the from on this called an air bill, and it slides in the clear cellophane wrapper. And then when you meet the when you give it to the FedEx driver, he pulls it out of the envelope. And he tears off his copy and gives you your copy and puts another copy back in the envelope. So without that air bill in this clear cellophane affixed to the side of the envelope, you don't know where the hell the package is supposed to go. <clears throat> so if you're shipping a half a dozen envelopes, overnight envelopes, and by accident the air bill goes inside the wrong cellophane wrapper, then... 
so let's say you're doing a contract. You're buying something from someone and you're selling something to someone else, and the contracts get they get shipped in reverse. So the guy that's selling you the thing for say fifty thousand, he finds out because he gets the other guy the, the buyer's contract by accident because the envelope has no to and from place on it. Uh, the 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 purchaser, the buyer. He gets that contract, the seller gets it, and he says, I'm selling him this for fifty thousand. He's selling it for two hundred and fifty thousand. I'm not gonna i I'm backing out of this deal. I'm not selling it for fifty. I want um I want two hundred thousand. Let him just make fifty. So that happened to me. So I called old Fred up and I said, You need to put to and from on your envelopes, dude. You need to put to and from on your envelopes. He did. He put to and from on the envelopes, like anybody would have. So that's why the FedEx envelopes changed because of Billy Redneck. Okay? I won't tell you the rest of the story, but let's just say I process served old Freddy, and y'all will use me to put uh, a fear in him. And now he backs out from Amazon, which is a really good thing. Somebody needs to strangle the economic strength of Amazon, Sam, because they are killing the mom and pop shops. They're just taking them out. So there it is. I do have power, and you have to understand, Yahweh will have you do something. And he says, I know what you need before you ask. He'll have you do something long before you know why you're on the project, why you're doing the assignment. You don't need to know. You just trust him. And man, you find out later on in life. Woo! It is awesome. All right, reading from Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 1. Uh, and the word of Yahweh spake uh, against America, Babylon, and against the land of Chaldeans by the prophet of Yahweh, Yermiyahu, declare ye among the nations, that's states of America, and publish and set up a standard. That's the fear of Yahweh. Uh, publish and conceal not. Let them all, let them have it. Tell them the truth. For confusion is taken. Confusion. Babylon is taken. You, oh, your confusion's gone. It's over with. You can't. You can't. You, the the preachers can't lie anymore. Uh, Bell is confounded. That's the prophets of Baal. Merodach is broken in pieces. Her idols are confounded. Her images are broken. For out of the north there cometh up a nation against her, which shall make her land desolate, and none shall dwell there. There shall, they shall remove, they shall depart, both man and beast. In those days, and in, the, in that time, there it is, saith Yahweh, the children of America shall come, they and the children of Yehuda the Jews together, going and weeping. You're going to be weeping, because everything I'm telling you is coming to pass. Rats are in uh, California, physical rats. The plague is there, bubonic plague. The rats are taking over. They're actually walking down the side with millions of rats in New York City in the barrels, and they're walking down the streets just like pedestrians, man. Huge problem with rats. The Dima rats, right? All right, but now we've got rats with plague. All right. And it says, They shall go together weeping. They shall go and seek Yahweh their mighty one. Oh, yeah, it's coming. Foolish virgins. They shall ask the way to Zion. How do you get to the calendar? How do you get to the fear of Yah? How do you get to hear His voice? The, the Mount Zion is your heart that He gives you a new heart of flesh. And He writes the Hebrews chapter 8, the blood coming into Christ. He writes His Torah, all of His Old Testament on the tables of your hearts and minds. Because when He died on that, on that, uh, uh, place of the skulls, Golgotha, when He died, He gave up the, He took the price of the death penalty from the Old Testament law. Then he gives you power from on high so you can do the law. We are the law. They shall seek. They shall ask the way to Zion with their faces thitherward, saying, Come and let us join ourselves to Yahweh in a perpetual covenant that shall not be forgotten. They're turning their faces at this point from the biometric imagery, driver's license, passports, all that bullshipping. This is verse 5. This is the prophecy of America in Jeremiah chapter 50. My people have been lost sheep. 
Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. They have turned them away on the mountains. They have gone from mountain to hill. That's the mountains and the hills of the whore in the book of Revelation are the seven days of the week. They're the gods you shouldn't be speaking of. The months are pagan demon names. My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. They have turned them away on the mountains. They have gone from mountain to hill. They have forgotten their resting place. That's the calendar of Yahweh according to the sun, the moon, and the stars. Now we're going to the book of Daniel. Moving quickly, the book of Daniel. In Daniel chapter 2. Verse 20, Daniel answered and said, Baduk be the name of Yahweh forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changed the times and the seasons and removed kings and set up of kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know, have no understanding. He revealed the deep and the secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness. And the light dwelleth in him. I thank thee, O Yahweh, and praise thee. That's hallelujah. Praise ye the name. Pronounce the name Yahweh. O thou, Yahweh, the, the mighty one of hosts, my fathers, who hast given me wisdom and might, and hast made known unto me now what we desired of thee. For thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. The fear of Yahweh is wisdom. The fear of Yahweh is his treasure. Isaiah 33, 6. The fear of Yahweh is his treasure. Where your treasure is, there also is your heart. Out of the mouth speaks the abundance of the heart. Matthew 10 says to preach the fear of Yahweh. Shout it from the rooftops, preachers of America. You will perish and you will be ashamed, saith Yahweh. He's going to tear down your churches and your altars and your Tamaz cross. It's all coming down, saith Yahweh Shua. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Raise up a hallelujah! Come on! Come on! Don't be a coward! Raise a hallelujah! Come on! In the presence of my enemies! In the presence of me enemies! I raise a hallelujah! My weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. Yashana, Baruch Ba Hashem Yahushua. with a reward and a rod of iron it's gonna break them the heartbeat the secret place of thunder Proverbs 623. This is WWCR, Nashville, Tennessee, USA, Worldwide Christian Radio.